Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminars, it's session one, looking at the basics and we're going to look at some of the structural elements such as beams, columns, floors, etc. Okay, this is a very quick run through of them, I'm not going to go into too much depth, but it's enough to get you going. So, um, we'll look at putting in some columns first and best thing to do is to set up a grid pattern that will allow us to connect the columns I quite using the offset method where I put one grid line in and then use pick lines and set an offset 4 meters in this case and that allows me to quickly replicate my grid pattern I'm going to make sure my offset is still on. Offset of zero. I'm going to make sure that my grids are overlapping. And just to demonstrate, if I change this to A rather than 1, when I now create some more grids, offsetting by 4 meters again it will pick up the fact that I've changed to letters rather than numbers okay so that's just a very quick 4 meter grid I'm going to start with columns and I'm going to work from the structure tab on the architecture tab you get the option of architectural columns and structural columns but I'm going to focus on structural elements so use a structural column when you first click on to column you're given one column loaded in to the default template of Revit for now we're going to concentrate on vertical columns slanted columns allow you to click in um, to, and put them on a slant um, but we'll concentrate on the vertical columns for some reason I'm not sure why um, Revit defaults to a depth of 2500 meters and almost creates a pile sinking into the ground so you've got hold of it by the top of the column so let's change that to height and let's just connect it to our default level one so it's going to be four meters high I can just start clicking in here and it'll snap to the intersections I'm going to undo those two stay within the command and show you this as well at grids which basically allows me to sweep and select all of the grids and it will place a column on every intersection finish that off and escape out of the command okay the reason for using grids is they are now linked to those grids you can see as I move the grids I'm getting a large number of changes. I could lock these grids down um, into equals using a aligned dimension and if you've been doing some of the other videos you should have seen this but I'm gonna quickly demonstrate. I'm just gonna click on all of those and then hit the equals sign and that will equalize the shapes. Repeat down there and I'll get an equal spacing so now if I move a line everything moves and maintains an equal equality between everything okay so it doesn't matter about the sizes for now um, right jump to 3d view and you'll see I've got a number of columns let's look at beams so again beams need columns to go between you can't put a beam in without columns but you can delete the column afterwards um, I'm going to turn on 3D snapping just to show you and I'm going to find that end point there so that's the square icon square snap icon and there's once and there's twice don't worry about the fact that the beam isn't going all the way into the RSJ 
in its mind it is just visually it isn't it's to save graphics and it also allows you to always see that midpoint there um, like I said I could now delete that beam if I want that column if I wanted to but I'm not going okay so I'm just going to delete off these two beams that I've done and show you a quicker way of doing this I'm going to jump to level one now so I'm looking down and go to beams again and that's because in the 2d view I've got the option to go on grids where it will find those grids for me and link everything up and it works very similar but I want to show you how to get a new beam in because again there's only the one in at the moment so I'm going to go to load family within the beam command come down find all these structural file folders down here and all beams anything other than columns basically you would use structural framing to populate the family type and um, let's find some steel and let's go for rectangular hollow section for now when I select it I get this list of a number of standard steel sizes I'm going to go for something quite reasonably big um, 200, 100, 10 mil thick. Okay, so that's now loaded in to my family there, and I can now go on grids, sweep across again, and it will join all of your columns with the beam. Finish that off, jump into 3D, see what we've got. Okay, now a uh, little word of warning the tops of these beams and the tops of these columns are at the moment resting at level zero and if you're going to put a slab system or a flooring system on top of this then really the top of the floor should be what's at level zero so you should be compensating for your floor thickness and reducing the height of these as you go um, as you insert them I've selected one of my beams and I've got to start level offset and an end level offset because I can have it sloped it doesn't have to be horizontal um, so for instance if my, I knew my flooring system was going to be 200 mil thick then I might start putting in minus 200 and then minus 200 and that beam will go down of course I'd want to do that for all of them I'm not going to worry about that for now but um, just take note of that okay other elements let's have a look at some steel bracing now I started the steel brace and notice it takes the rectangular hollow section as being the type of brace it's going to give me I've got 3d snapping turned on so I can start snapping between objects okay so that's not great I don't want to use that beam so how do I get a different beam in I can't change it if I go to edit type nowhere in there does it mention what type of beam I'm using apart from there so how do I do it as far as I know whether this is the official way or not I'm unsure but this is how I do it I preload the beam I want before I start the command so I will start the brace command go to load family go to the structural framing folders go to steel again this time I'll choose round bar for instance okay and now I've got something I can start working with. I'm going to do a cross like that and then select them and then copy them a number of times. I could do this a variety of ways just for speed. I should have turned on multiple. Copy multiple. Okay, 
so you get the idea you have to be neat when you're doing copying like that otherwise they're not legitimate connections another thing we can do here is I want to show you timber framing as well um, like a roof truss system so if I go again if I go to the truss system it says no structural trusses loaded come down here and structural trusses I quite like to just click on the top one and use my down arrow on my keyboard to go through until I get the one I want so I'm going to use that one now this again I can just grab the tops of these it's not particularly realistic this okay that has taken the bar I used as a stiffener as its element and there's no way of changing that so prior to bringing this in I should have gone to beam loaded in a family gone and found the elements I want so this is a little bit convoluted but we get there in the end dimension lumber let's stick in relatively big bit of timber and I'm just going to pop this on the floor so I'm not going to use that one but now when I go to my truss it's remembered that I've used the Fink W truss but now it's using I'm getting a little warning because something's slightly off but you see how I did that I preloaded it with the type of beam that I wanted to be included into the system. Um, okay. Quick look at beam systems. This will take that timber beam as well now, so you have to preload this. Automatic beam system works very well. Um, I'm going to put a space in 500 just nominally and you'll see if I ho hover over the horizontal I'll get horizontal beams if I hover over the vertical I'll get vertical beams I could sketch the beam system as well justification centered um, or you can have end beginning strange going on there with my connection just for speed I'll show you okay so you can very quickly put in a beam system lastly we put in some isolated pads structural foundation pads uh, for go to level zero and go to my isolated pad again there's nothing loaded in so I will go to structural foundations and let's just grab a rectangular footing for now there are a lot in there and it's well worth looking through again I'm going to use that grids this is a good thing with grids it speeds the process up I got a warning because I can't see it because it's below ground. But you see, I can get an isolated foundation on the bottom of each of my columns. There are other items in here as well, such as reinforcement. Once you've got a, a floor in place, you can start putting reinforcement in. Um, they'll work very similar to one another. I guess the point of this is if I go to visibility graphics 
uh, VG for shortcut or I go to view and then visibility graphics same difference and I untick everything and come down to structures I can isolate off structural elements I've turned everything else off but I'm still getting all of these things so anything you make from the structures tab will be kept on and that's great for extracting the structural information uh, for sending on to a structural engineer that's a very quick and easy way okay like I said this is a very short overview of it so thank you very much